Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition, uh, the Tuesday edition of the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is having a good day. So um, I'm a very big sports fan and it kind of pains me uh, to see that these you know, major sports uh, may or may not uh, happen this year, obviously because of Corona. And th there's this one, one big antidote uh, that goes back into... Uh, into the 1980s, mid-1980s, when Michael Jordan was attending um, University of uh, Carolina, right? Carolina Tar Heels uh, at Chapel Hill. And the old adage was the only person that could ever stop Michael Jordan was Dean Smith. Well, you guys don't know D Dean Smith was. He was the legendary coach of the Carolina Tar Heels. Uh, and the reason why that statement it makes so much sense, Michael Jordan never showed his true potential until Dean Smith was kind of in his back view mirror, basically meaning that he let Michael play only to the constriction of his philosophy. And when once Michael got into the NBA, Michael Jordan became, well, Michael Jordan. And the one thing that we're looking at right now is a, a market that looks like it's unstoppable, right? Really is unstoppable. Corona jumping, nobody cares. Navarro comes out last night, says, hey, by the way, the China deal is dead. Nobody told Trump, nobody told everybody else in the White House. They smacked him on the head, the market gapped up, right? So the only thing that could stop this bull market right now is, well, the bull market. And right now we are getting to the point that every single video, you know, kind of sounds uh, very, very methodical by me saying the same things. Well, we're looking for clues. We're looking for clues. This market can't uh, go on, you know, all the time, no matter what happens, no matter what headline continues to go higher and higher and higher. And I've always said this on every video. I'm very, very... I'm always bullish, right? Because, because again, we're not getting a reason until we get a reason uh, not to be bullish. But I'm always conscious of the fact that, again, any given moment, we could get a rug pull. If you guys remember, uh, a couple of Wednesdays ago, I said, look, we got a, a little bit of a message here. Are you paying attention to it? And if you go back to last Wednesday, that was this inverted hammer, right? Everybody see this inverted hammer? It hit the top of the range, uh, top of the daily Bollinger Band. It put it an inverted hammer. Again, for all you guys who are uh, pretty brand new to uh, charting or trading, whatever the case may be, uh, a hammer, which is a very, very basic, uh, basic study in the Japanese candlesticks means, well, there's a short-term reversal back to the upside that should happen. An inverted ha hammer is obviously the opposite. And when we talked about warning signs, we talked about this area here last Wednesday and then yada, yada, yada. The next day there was a 7%, uh, you know, 7% sell-off uh, in the Dow Jones, obviously, 5 and 6% on the other, other major uh, exchanges. Again, nobody is talking about this is the end of the world, this is the end of this rally, but this is, these are the signs that we need to be kind of aware of, okay? Always need to put ourselves in a situation that nobody is, you know, surprised when the rug is pulled. And again, every market, no matter how strong the market is, there's obviously periods of areas that you will get a market pull. The question is, are you responsible enough to understand this is coming, acknowledge it, and look for the warning signs? Or are you complete buffoon and you have the visors on, bull market, bull market, bull market, Robin Hood, bull market, chase everything in sight, right? That's the questions. So if you look at how we close today, and we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Again, very uh, aggressive day. This time I did not screw things up, which is good. Um, if you look at the signs, and every single night we're looking at the signs, the one thing that I always kind of maintained and why I think you have to have a systematic approach of kind of how you handle uh, the markets on a daily basis. Um, I get about 99% of my day done uh, prior to the end of the morning session. The morning session is actually not, doesn't stop at 12 o'clock Eastern. The, the morning session actually stops uh, at one o'clock Eastern time because again, that lunchtime candles 
uh, many of times will give you a sneaky pivot back to the up or downside. Uh, so there's a lot of value in that 12 o'clock candle. A lot of people don't acknowledge it, but again, for all of us who trade in the webinar, we kind of do. Um, but I always maintain that the dumb money, and again, I'm part of the dumb money because again, the dumb money is aggression. The dumb money is chasing. Well, most of the dumb money is chasing. Some of them, uh, some of them are actually, um, you know, using the dumb money theory to kind of take advantage of them, but that's not here or there. So I am part of the dumb money. I trade in the morning. Uh, that three, four hour window we have usually will give us a really good value aggression window for the day. Uh, what I use the afternoons for is I try to kind of get an opinion of what I think is going to happen next. Because again, I've always maintained the fact that if you are trading in the afternoon, the only thing you want to do is only, you know, only try to maximize uh, kind of exposure 10-15% of your profits for the day because of the ranges they're going to contract and it's not the first time you heard me say that you're, there's a very good high probability that you'll give back most of your day uh, during the afternoon um, or, or all of it uh, to begin with so it's very very important but the afternoon is equally important for me to kind of gather information of what I think is going to happen uh, for tomorrow, okay, looking for stocks that are weak, that didn't rally with the futures, looking for stocks that are strong, that it didn't uh, sell off with the futures, and kind of make my opinion. So when I'm charting at nighttime and I look at the macro picture, and I look at the ETFs and the indexes uh, and the beta names, I'll have a very, very good sense what I think is going to happen tomorrow. Now, obviously, we need confirmation. You can't put the, you know, the, 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 the cart in front of the horse, but at least, as I say all the time, have an opinion, okay? Your opinion matters. The research that you uh, put in the night before is going to make your day, okay? It's not gonna, get, you know, it's not gonna pull the wool out over your eyes and it's gonna surprise you anything. So anything that you're looking for the next day should be the process uh, of kind of identifying the night before. And this is kind of what I want to bring to your attention. So last Wednesday, uh, big inverted hammer kind of blow off top. I like to use the word blow off top. A lot of people use that word. A lot of people understand that word instead of the blow off, instead of the inverted hammer. So last Wednesday, uh, very, very similar. You had an inverted hammer uh, off the daily Bollinger Band, which resulted in a very, very aggressive sell off uh, to the bottom of the range. If you look at what we saw today, okay, uh, especially at the close, you will notice exactly the same thing. So here's your inverted hammer. Here's the inverted hammer, right? If you go through the charts, right? If you go through the charts um, all the way back, okay, you'll notice that pretty much every single time you got an inverted hammer, you're going to get a move to the downside. So here is the inverted hammer here, open to the downside. Again, doesn't mean it's going to be Armageddon. We're going to go back to uh, the, the March lows. All it means it's setting up for the next day for lower prices. So here is an inverted hammer. Here's an inverted hammer. Uh, where are we here? Here's an inverted hammer, right? You can just go through the charts. And this is why we always talk about train your brain, uh, train your mind to identify this. So inverted hammer, uh, sell off, inverted hammer, sell off, inverted hammer that opens up sell off, right? Inverted hammer, sell off, inverted hammer, sell off. So you kind of get the theme. So that's what we closed today. Okay. We closed on the, you know, on the inverted hammer. So obviously I'm not going to try to will my way into a sell off tomorrow. I am now I'm conscious. I made my list of stocks that I believe had really, really big runs. Okay. Uh, closed with, with the mirror image of uh, of the QQQs, and now I'm just waiting for downside co confirmation. So if you look at a lot of names, you'll notice the same thing, right? Apple, very, very strong today, inverted hammer. Facebook broke out today, beautiful trade, inverted hammer. Um, I mean, there's so many. Shop that had this magical 150-point run, inverted hammer. Netflix had this monster, monster run, inverted hammer. You can go on, you know, there, there's tons of them, right? There's, they're not really, this is not a, you know, one of those uh, things you see on Instagram. Let me show you the three secrets of trading. There's all secrets, spoiler alert, right? They're all in front of you. If you're charting tonight, you'll see there's plenty of charts that look exactly the same thing. And then you're also seeing charts, for example, like a BYND that closed below the five day moving average. Again, which is basically telling you that one more confirmation day, there is gonna be some violence in its future. Same thing with names like Boeing, right? Same thing names like Boeing as well. Uh, Roku to a smaller extent. Again, this might not be something that stands out very, very aggressively 
uh, especially to the newer traders. But again, you're a new trader. You're still trying to get your uh, your feet on the ground. You're still trying to figure out who the hell you are, what type of trader you want to be, what your risk tolerance, how big is your account side, what's your risk management, uh, what's your pain threshold. So again, nobody expects you. That's why I keep on saying all the time, everything in trading is stages. Nobody is expecting you to, to identify a potential blow off top in the markets. But again, as I say all the time, um, experience is always going to beat the, the luck of any trader. Okay, you could get lucky once, you can get lucky twice, you can get lucky 33 times. Eventually, the market gods are going to separate, right? Experience into luck, and then obviously one side is going to make it out of there. And obviously, the only way you get experience is through time. So if you are a new trader, it's okay. If you are charting tonight and you don't see this, it's okay. You're not supposed to. But again, for all of us who have been trading for a very, very long time, this is a pretty aggressive signal. And if charts start to confirming those 60 minute channels on the lows tomorrow, uh, after the 10 o'clock lows, there will be uh, a back test. How, how significant the back test is, we have no idea, right? You know, you could have, you, you could have a trade for a dollar, you could have a trade for $20. We, we don't know. If I knew what the closing price is for tomorrow, Again, I wouldn't be making this video tomorrow. I just literally just shorting everything in sight and covering on the lows. It doesn't work that way. So again, our opinion matters, our research matters, our sentiment matters, our ability to understand the moving parts matters. And now we need that dreaded right confirmation that a lot of traders look for, understand, but don't wait to actually do it. So if you look at a lot of charts tonight, you will see a lot of tendencies, similar tendencies, and all we need now for tomorrow uh, is confirmation to the downside. Now, again, I could be completely wrong, right? We could be completely wrong. Uh, we could open down uh, trap shorts, go up again and take out 52 week highs or gap up and gap and go again. Again, who cares about being right or wrong? Okay, everybody's wrong. It's not about being wrong. I'm not, you know, I'm not, nobody's looking to be smart here. We're, we're trying to avoid pain and we're trying to avoid losses. And we're, again, we're trying to put ourselves in a position to kind of figure out what happens next and obviously wait for it. So uh, going into tomorrow, again, I am sell biased. That's, there's no other way uh, to kind of describe it. There are a couple of names uh, that I do like. Um, you know, Alibaba looks really good. We trade Alibaba, Alibaba pretty well today. Um, there's some names that still have a lot of call buying, but again, a lot of call buying doesn't mean they're right. A lot of call buying means that again, like I've been saying for many, many years, you know, more, most hedge funds are easier. It's easier for them to raise money than to manage it. So if you had a 300 point run up in Amazon, why are you buying the 2,900 calls for, for weekly expiration? It just doesn't make sense. So again, take that for a grain of salt. Uh, so yeah, I, I want to give the bears, uh, or at least other bears, I want to give the sell side bias, the benefit of the doubt uh, going into tomorrow's session. Obviously, if we see something completely different uh, in the first candle, I will switch gears, obviously look for some value back to the upside. Uh, I definitely like some longs uh, for tomorrow, but I definitely like uh, many, many shorts. Uh, very aggressive day today, okay? And again, this is, this is another perfect example that you don't need many trades uh, to, to get where you need to go. Matter of fact, uh, all this was kind of transpiring throughout the day. We saw a lot of weakness in many, many names, so we had to pick our spots. And I, and I wanted to really hammer the point home that I didn't want anything to do with Amazon. I didn't want anything to do with Tulo. I didn't want anything to do with Shop. They already made their moves, right? I didn't want anything to do with Netflix. They already made their moves. We were looking for mid-tier or 52-week high players that were consolidating for about a week or so, and those are the names we got. Uh, again, congratulations for you guys who did come in Amazon yesterday, that 2698, 2700 area, put up a $75 move in 24 hours. Great job for those. But again, it's all about kind of preservation of capital now and start looking to uh, make some hay back uh, to the downside. So let's talk about this. Uh, Alibaba was, was really good. Uh, we saw monster call activity. Again, this is kind of the whole point. Option flow uh, plus daily confirmation usually looks Look, looks really, really good. That's what happened today. Uh, 226.75, 227 needs to build. Uh, Bobo and Nuts, uh, very, very strong move. Really, really strong move. It took out this whole range here, uh, traded up to like 30 and change. Uh, all time highs uh, is this area here. You know, it's it's the you know it's the January 20 you know 20 highs. If this thing confirms tomorrow, who knows? You know, who knows? I, I definitely like to get this thing on a on a rising 60 minute support. 
Uh, then maybe add through the 52-week highs. But again, really one of the definitely stronger names out there. Great job for all you guys who caught that. Uh, Tesla, you know, I made a little bit of money on Tesla. It took out the 1010. Obviously, 1020 is still the big spot. It took out the 1010 opening range. It traded up to 1012, and I was like, Ugh, just, just, it's just not getting there. It's just, it's just not getting there. So I took some off, break even on the balance. Again, that's where we are right now. We do not want to overstay our welcome, especially on stronger names. Again, we just identified the reasons why a lot of names are putting it in blow off tops. Uh, NVIDIA, again, broke out today, uh, 384, oh, excuse me, broke out pre market. Uh, 384 rejection, three times pre-market for reclaims can go more. And again, this is how you know uh, the market, the only thing that could stop the bulls are the bulls. So here's the, you know, here's the 84 right here. Uh, and it went to 85.70, right? 85.70, if the market was strong, Dean Smith, Michael Jordan, if the market was strong, this thing would not reverse, okay? It would not reverse $8 off its high. So again, take that into consideration again when you're charting uh, for tomorrow's session. Uh, Facebook is really good. Uh, 2130, tw uh, 2130, tw uh, 24150 needs to build. Really nice move on Facebook. I caught Facebook today. I caught uh, a little bit of Tesla and I caught uh, Alibaba, which were really, really good. So here is Tesla. It broke out when as high as to uh, 45. Really big move on, on Facebook. So that was really good as well. Uh, ZI, I was watching, never gave a second entry. It took out that 5150, uh, put in a high of 5175, and never gave a second entry. Um, let's see what else. Uh, even this NK, this is when you know the market was really strong. Even this NKLA woke up. Uh, 70, 80, 71 needs to build. So here was NKLA, really, really strong move into the close. So here was the whole 71, 80, 72 area uh, and exploded. It went to almost 76. It actually still like, looks pretty good for tomorrow. Uh, you can see, you know, this is one that you would definitely want to keep an eye on for a rising 60-minute uh, dip. Uh, the C-Bay never got to this level. Uh, again, you know, take on the way up, right? Take on the way up, big move on Facebook. Uh, FSLY obviously never got to the 7460 monster monster move and then we were just saying look just wait for wait for the market to pick a direction uh, obviously uh, the market didn't okay towards the end uh, new highs on Facebook um, new highs in the video uh, you know take some sales obviously 87 is potential went to 86 uh, big moves I go finally you know, finally you could just go already you know went to 30 uh, so big move there as well. Uh, 231.14s is obviously the 52-week highs. Uh, so good job. I mean, really, really good job there. Uh, really, really good job there as well. So uh, again, I, look, I, you can only push the market, right? You can only push value to so much. When you're getting uh, a lot of signs, okay, you're getting a lot of signs, you're getting exhaustion, okay, you're getting blow-off tops. These are all signals for you to kind of step off the gas Reevaluate. Obviously, try to ex really remove as much overnight exposure as possible. If you got runners, that's a whole different story. But again, the last thing you want to do is entering full size on an inverted hammer on a blow-off top on the Nasdaq 100. We'll see how things play out. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Again, have an opinion. Wait for confirmation, and once you get that confirmation, attack with confidence and extreme prejudice. Guys, have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.